So thanks everyone for coming. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, real-time Argo rollout analytics uh, powered by a notification engine. We'll talk about how we did some uh, analytics with the help of the notification engine uh, at Intuit. My name is Henrik Blixt. I'm a group product manager at Intuit working on our development uh, platform and developer experience. And I'm also one of the uh, Argo maintainers. Uh -huh. Hi, I'm Vijay Agrawal, and I'm the Senior Engineering Manager at Intuit, and I lead the CID CD systems at uh, uh, Intuit. So just quickly, what we'll go through today, I'll give you a brief overview of the uh, Intuit platform, uh, what we've been up to the last few years, why we're doing what we're doing. Um, we'll go in a little bit into uh, some of the operational challenges that we, we've seen in our platform, which led up to what we're going to talk about today. And then Vijay will walk us through what we did and how we did it, and then we'll wrap up with a little bit uh, view into the future, some ideas we have on how we can take this to the next, uh, next level. So quickly, uh, into it, we've been working on our development platform for the last few years. We've transitioned to, to this modern uh, platform, uh, cloud-native based. I think you've all seen the cloud, the CNCF cloud native landscape, you know, with a ton of different things on it. We use a good chunk of that in our platform. And with the help of this, we've been able to abstract some of the complexities, automate a lot of things, and increased our develop, development velocity about nine times over the last few years, which, which is a pretty amazing achievement. And we run pretty much everything we talk about here today at scale at Intuit. Uh, our environment, I think, is up to like 320 clusters now. Um, so pretty much everything runs on Kubernetes in the public cloud. And more relevant to the talk today, uh, we have about 16,000 namespaces spread out of those 300 clusters, roughly 25,000 applications running in, in Argo CD, and about 13,000 or so roll-up objects um, in, in there. All of this would not be possible without open source. You've probably heard about Argo since you're here today. That's one of the open source projects that, we, that we're heavily invested in. But there are a number of other ones that we maintain, some that we created, some that we contribute to. But whatever we do, we try and do open source upstream first to make sure we don't have a downstream fork, and we give back to the community what, whatever we do. And uh, thanks to that, we've also been uh, acknowledged as the end user recipient twice by, by CNCF, lastly uh, in 2022. Uh, we're also one of the end users, so we're also very engaged in the end user community. We don't sell any uh, cloud native services, so what we're doing today is not a sales pitch. This is how we use it, why we're using it, and, and what you wanna, where we want to go with it. So, so why are we here today? So we've used progressive delivery and Argo rollouts uh, for years now. It was un unveiled in San Diego many, many years ago. I guess it was. 2019, right? KubeCon in, in San Diego. And we've been using it in production uh, pretty much ever since. Uh, and it's one of the default options in our development platform. If you create a service, if you vend a new service at Intuit, you're going to be set up for Argo rollouts, which is awesome. Uh, helps us a lot. But as we're getting more and more usage of this platform, you know, as a product manager, I want to understand you know, how is this platform being used? How are my users really using these platforms? Sure, we have some operational data. We can see you know, how, many, how many clusters we have, how many rollouts objects and all that. But how are my users really using the platform, right? And that will help me as a product manager to see both how we can improve the usage of these features within Intuit to make our developers more productive, but also are there any gaps that we can work with the community on to improve the Argo ecosystem upstream? So, but what we realized was to do this, we need a lot more insight into what, what and how the product is being used. So, some of the questions we're trying to answer, like what features are actually being used? Yes, we know you use Argo rollouts, but what are you really using in Argo rollouts? And it could be things like what traffic strategy you use, for example. Like if you're using service mesh, that might have implications on our service mesh implementation. We would need to do some integration with service mesh, work with the service mesh team. You can do some, some cool integrations there maybe. We vend a bunch of templates automatically um, when, when you get your service initially created. But how many users have really changed the, that basic template? How many people have tweaked them? 
what metrics are you using to, to drive your analysis runs? Have you come up with a bunch of custom metrics? If so, are those metrics we should maybe incorporate into the platform? Or are they using something that they maybe shouldn't be using, right? And also, some more on the troubleshooting and RCA side, like what's causing rollouts to not go well? Um, are there performance issues? Are analysis run, runs taking longer than they should because of maybe there's something we need to look at Prometheus? There's something else that's going on, right? So we need deeper insights. We need a lot more insights and more data on how this is being used. So Hendrix asked like a lot of questions that we are asking. And uh, we try to sort of build a generic framework that can answer those questions uh, when we need to, we need that data. So traditionally what we would have done in the past is when you need data insights, like we would create a requirement for a developer and developer will go update the code, will deploy that code to production and then we'll verify that data uh, and then create a dashboard out of it. It can take anywhere from um, days to weeks depending on like how long is your production uh, development cycle. Uh, what we set out to do is how we can improve this and what we did uh, at least for rollout insights is we removed all these middle steps. So when you need data insights, we created a generic framework that you can directly go and create the appropriate query to create a dashboard which, where you can visualize. You, you have a generic all data uh, available at to your fingertips. Um, with this, we don't need uh, developer dependency for data gathering and insights. That was like one of, and we'll show how we accomplish this uh, uh, going forward. So one of the core components that uh, we did is like we moved to centralized logging. Before this, like we were logging in few different places, um, in different instances, and few months back, we, we took an initiative and we sort of uh, did centralized logging. Uh, we have like, as Hendrix mentioned, like 320 clusters, and uh, there is a rollout controller which is running in each of those controllers watching all the rollout objects that are configured within the cluster. And all these like 300 controllers are sending all that data to a centralized uh, server. And we'll see how we are doing that in future slides. But that's the core of centralized logging. logging. And what that has enabled us to do is it has enabled us to sort of better manage our plat uh, 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 logging and it has provided standardization for that logging. Um, since all are flowing in the same matrix, same format, uh, it has provided that standardization. And uh, it has accelerated our MTTR as well because now we can get those insights much faster because all data is available in one place and we can build correlations across the platform uh, when we do see issues. Uh, it enables us to sort of create central monitoring and alerting across our platform. Uh, it provides better data security because we have to manage just one instance instead of multiple instances and we can configure effective RBAC on, on the data. Uh, again, cost is improved because you are sharing uh, the resources across all your clusters now. Uh, so we'll look at like how, how we accomplish this and like we use notification engine uh, to accomplish a lot of the, uh, what we will talk about today. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about like what notification engine is, how, uh, how its uh, configuration is done and how we are using it. So notification engine at a high level is a uh, configuration driven sort of Golang library that can provide you ability to configure notifications for cloud native applications. We are using it for rollouts and CD, but you can use it for any cloud native application. And at a high level, what notification engine provides is it provides you a, a K8 informer that's watching on a particular resource. In this case, we are using it to watch rollout resources and it's watching on update, on add, or when a resource is added, deleted, or updated. And when it does detect that, it's using sort of K8 API server to detect those changes. And when it does detect those changes, um, it looks at the configuration which is configured in the notification engine and um, which is basically a bunch of triggers and templates. And based on those triggers and templates, it would send out appropriate notification to like whether Slack, PagerDuty, or a custom webhook, whatever you have configured it to be. Uh, the key features of notification engine it is it's provide out of box integration with a bunch of these uh, different providers and you can customize it to different uh, templates whatever you need to and you can even create your custom triggers uh, for whatever your needs are. Uh, it provides you all these notifications in real time um, for any resource changes that you want. 
Um, the benefits that we have seen with it is it has provided us improved visibility and transparency into our development processes where, for example, if a rollout is completed, then we can send an automated alert to Slack saying that rollout is completed. Or if a rollout is aborted, we can create an incident that this was aborted and somebody can take a look, which uh, uh, results in faster mitigation of incidents uh, when they do happen. So both of these benefits we have realized uh, uh, with it. Let's look at notification config. So at a high level, like if you want to add a notification to the system, what we do is we have a, a subscription. We add a subscription which, is a, uh, which contains sort of a recipient, which is the receiver for the message, and a trigger when the message should be triggered. Uh, a recipient in this case is a webhook. It could be a Slack or a pager duty or Teams, whatever you want it to be. In this case, we configure the URL where the data should be sent, and then we configure a trigger. And this is a custom trigger. We provide some out-of-box triggers as well. Uh, but this trigger, basically, what the when condition there is, uh, is what I want to hi highlight here, uh, which says like the current pod hash not equal to stable hash, which means that the rollout is in progress and the abort status flag is true, which means this rollout is aborted. So we, we and we want to send this notification once per revision. Uh, so we we configured that uh, you when whenever this condition is met, the notification will, engine will 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 send a notification. And the notification format of it is defined by the send uh, for a template over there. And in this case, the important thing to highlight is we are sending the whole rollout object uh, that is uh, that we saw in the message. And you will see the power of sending that whole manifest over there later on, because then we can ask any question related to that manifest later on when we are querying the data, uh, where we don't need to sort of create individualized matrix for each of the data points. We get a generic framework for everything. Uh, now, we'll, we'll see how we are deploying this at Intuit. Uh, so you have same stuff like where we have these 300 controllers, and uh, it has a bunch of rollout objects within it. And uh, these objects are typically watching GitHub repos uh, that are being managed by individual app developers. And we have approximately 4,000 repos and 13,000 rollout objects uh, uh, that we have managed as of now, and it's growing. And uh, it's, we want to sort of, uh, we add a notification engine which is watching over these changes in these rollout objects and taking action when do they, those changes do happen. So what it does is we have a centralized webhook receiver, which is taking notifications uh, the, the, uh, from the uh, uh, notification engine, and it processes all these uh, notifications that are coming. And uh, typically, right now, we are using six uh, uh, basic triggers when a rollout is added, deleted, aborted, started, uh, completed, or uh, sort of fully promoted. We are interested in these events. And when they do happen, uh, we look at, like, send the whole manifest uh, to the uh, webhook receiver. And uh, the webhook receivers take that, takes that and forwards it to a central uh, uh, logging server. In this case, like we use Splunk and Athena for uh, for uh, for long uh, longer time frame, and then we do send that some of the pre-computed metrics to Prometheus as well for for uh, uh, different use cases that we have. Um, and then based on once you have it in the central logging system, you can correlate it with other data. Like you are receiving uh, data from let's say service mesh, you can correlate that data with this data point to create even richer insights for your data and create uh, more dynamic dashboards out of this. Um, so this is at a high level what we do, and we are doing some future enhancements to this system uh, where we are adding message queue support because sometimes we do see that notifications are missed um, in some of the scenarios because uh, if the webhook receiver was unavailable for whatever reason, um, then you do miss some notifications. So we are actually adding message queue support to it. And secondly, we are adding run, uh, support for runtime values where we just don't want to know that what strategy you are using, but when the rollout does get aborted, we want to see the actual values uh, on the analysis template that uh, when it did get aborted um, so that we can uh, tweak our defaults better and, and learn from it. Uh, so we'll look at some of like interesting data that we gathered and uh, what is uh, how you can create that data points from that. Uh, so here, uh, this shows like how our deployment is going, how many are using Canary versus Blue Green uh, uh, on a daily basis. And this provides us, like as we are rolling out AI ops based uh, uh, strategy, we can see that adoption over here uh, as we roll it out and, and track that. 
Similarly, we, we can track live how, how traffic routers are being used at Intuit uh, for, from a rollout perspective. Like a lot of them are not using a traffic router. Some of them are using STO, some of, the, some of them are using ALV, some are using a combination of that. So we can track all that and when an incident does come, we can prioritize it accordingly, how many people it's impacting and reach out to those service owners based on the criticality of it. Uh, this sort of provides us a view of uh, how many rollouts are being completed on a daily basis. So you can see Saturday, Sunday, people don't do deployment, it's expected. Uh, but if we do see that drop on weekdays, then we can take action. Uh, again, like you can see how many are aborted, very few as expected, some are uh, sort of promoted full, and we can sort of understand that why people are promoting full and sort of take action to sort of improve rollouts. Um, <clears throat> this sort of uh, graph provides a view into how much is the pause time when people are sort of doing rollouts. Uh, typically, 600 is the default template we went with. So you see that usage. And a lot of people have moved to zero. They don't want any uh, sort of, uh, they are not using the rollouts effectively, but those are pre-prod environment. So it's expected in that sense that they, they don't want any uh, uh, sort of, they want to move faster in their pre-prod environment. And that's why the timing is zero. Uh, and we can sort of see how people have deviated from defaults. Similarly, like same for number of steps, like four is the default we ship with, and then like how people have changed that over time. And uh, like people are using 14 steps. We want to know what those 14 steps are. What are the use cases in which they are using 14? So we can tweak our defaults uh, based on the different use cases we have rather than shipping one static uh, default template to uh, people. And we can see here like what are, which services using it, what are the steps they are using it for, and then later we can reach out to those uh, people either to understand their use case or if we see it at a broader scale, then, then we can make adjustments to our templates. Uh, this shows like how many, which template people are actually using. In this case, like memory, error rate, CPU utilization, and request latency are heavily used. And some people are using like pods, restarts, and assets. And we'll see like as we are rolling out again AI ops space, we'll see that template pick up um, here uh, as we go along. Uh, again, abort is a critical functionality of rollout. So we do want to understand like when a rollout is aborted, uh, what is happening behind the scenes, why a rollout is being aborted. Uh, so we do see, we, we, ha we can see that uh, if it's aborted due to CPU, uh, CPU utilization or memory utilization, or if it's uh, like the success rate is falling, then it's aborted. Uh, and like uh, we, we have a category missing data, which is like we are not able to receive that data from Prometheus. So if it's aborted due to that, um, then like we, we get to know. And at, at here, if we see that matrix sort of trending in the wrong direction, then we know that our defaults are not correct and we need to adjust them. Um, and we can go further deeper and see that when a rollout is aborted, then uh, what is the matrix that it got aborted is, what was the values that were configured and when the rollout was aborted. So we have the timestamps and everything, um, so we can track it actively. And come on. Thanks, Vijay. <clears throat> so most of what Vijay talked about is already in production, right? So we're seeing some of the benefits of this already. Um, some of it is, is fairly new, so we're still, you know, have some hopes and ideas of, of where we're going to see some, some benefits from this as we, as we learn more. But one of the key benefits is, is that it's improving our best practices. Having all this insight lets us understand our users better. And understanding users better means that we can help them more and better. We can figure out what are the best ways to deploy Argo rollouts and use Argo rollouts. We can improve our templates, make sure that you know, whatever configuration they do is, is suiting their needs. So we'll have fewer misconfiguration and less issues from those, from those users using our, our templates and platform. It, especially for me as a product manager, this is awesome as well because it helps me understand how the users are really using the product. And I'm using the word product like Pratik did this morning. I know, it, I know it's an open source project, but calling it a product, which helps me understand the users, right? Yes, I talk to a lot of internal users. I talk to people in the community, but having this data gives me another level of understanding that I can't really gather in, in in a like one-to-one -one conversations or surveys or whatnot, right? It also ha helps the platform team. Like VG and the team, when they run this for all our users, they get a lot of data that helps them do root cause analysis faster and easier. Instead of reaching out to the user and asking them, going back and forth, they have all this data at their fingertips. And in addition, we can use this to do some proactive actions. We get these notifications. We can see that someone configured something. Uh, 
that's maybe not according to best practices. We can reach out to them proactively and hopefully in the future even do like automatic proactive actions and, and helping them out and making sure we steer them in the right direction, making sure that you know, what they have is, is something that's gonna work um, for their service. And last but not least, reducing the end user involvement. And I mean that in a good way. We do want end user involvement, but end users don't necessarily want to spend time with the platform team debugging issues, right? Uh, I'm sure that all of you that have had some platform issues, you talk to a platform team, you get frustrated with how long it is and all the questions they ask. By using this, we can do a lot more of that without going back and forth to the user. We have all the data, we can just get on it, do it faster, do it more efficiently. Some of the things we were looking at to, to enhance this and, and make it even better is, is getting even further into the data. Uh, VJ already talked about you know, getting some of the runtime data, making sure we can do some more correlation with the, with the manifest and what's actually in the running system. And that will help us do in, get an even better understanding of why things happened, when they happened, and how they happened. Of course, like everyone else, we're looking at AI and seeing how we can use AI here to help us do some log analysis, do some correlations, and, and help automate some of that uh, uh, predictions and root cause analysis that, that we're spending way too much time on today. Message queue support, what I talked about, we don't have any automation or alerting based on this, this yet, but you can see that maybe it's something we can do in the future. But even so, even with the data gathering, we wanna make sure that we have consistent data and, and we have uh, correct data. Looking at the success we've seen with this for Argo rollouts, since notification engine is here for Argo CD as well, like why not see how we can use this in, in Argo CD? Uh, we've learned a lot about Argo rollouts over the last few months as we've been doing this. Um, so we want to see how we can take this to Argo CD as well. There are ways you can use other things like Google Analytics to get some of this user data in, in CD as well, but you're not going to get to the level of level of depth or the level of data that you get by using this natively with the notification engine. So, so using this for Argo CD to look at you know, how people are using rollbacks and what features using the product is going to help us get the same level of depth and understanding of Argo CD as we've been getting from Argo rollouts. There's only so much you can cover in 25 minutes. I hope this at least was a good teaser into what we've done. VJ and I are going to be here all week. Feel free to reach out to us in the booth, in the bar, wherever you see us, and we're happy to spend hours talking about this. Thanks everyone for coming.